Hi, my name is Caralia from the Yoga Lunchbox and today I'm getting cozy and comfortable on the couch with Sasha Hope and Sandy Murphy of the Nadi Teacher Training Program. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lovely to be here. Yeah. Cozy in front of the fire. I know, I know. Mm. The fire's on. We're in Glenorchy. It's actually not that cold outside but the fire is on. Cold if you're from anywhere else in New Zealand or the world, probably. <laughs> True. <laughs> So we're here to talk about the teacher training program. Mm -hmm. Sandy, you started this, this will be your fourth year in 2018, right? So you started yes. three years ago running this program. Yeah, 2015 was our first year. How yeah. was that process oh, for you? Oh, amazing. I met Niana Bray in 2014, a year previous to that, and I remember sitting in front of a fire and having a conversation about the possibility of uniting forces and running a teacher training. And yeah, amazingly, a year out of that, we were on track and ready to roll. You were doing it. We were doing it. Yeah. And it's been an incredible journey getting to know her as a teacher and receiving her wisdom over the years and mm -hmm. um, and actually having a chance to, you know, really give back and, and put something out there for students to work with and to journey on with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And next year, 2018, so Niana's not coming back. No. Um, and we have Sasha instead. Yeah. So Sasha, how did this happen? For you, because this is the first time you've trained as a teacher, like you've done trainings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how did it come about? Give us a look. So it was interesting. I, you know, I've been teaching for 15 years and practicing for 20 years and, um, you know, I've been having children and so teaching and focusing on motherhood and family as well. And I kind of got to that stage of, you know, I'm ready to start teaching trainings and then Sandy approached me like literally the next week and sort of mm. said would you be interested in teaching this training with me and you know Sandy and her way of being and the way that she <laughs> teaches really resonated with me personally and uh, the whole importance that yoga is it's a tool and it's a journey for transformation so I think that's mm. really important to both of us that resonates for both of us and that you know definitely be coming through the training so I just feel like together we were like, yeah, this this will really work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had absolutely no hesitation in knowing who it was that I would, um, who, who it was that I would ask for the same reasons as Sasha's just shared. Mm -hmm. you know, that we're, we're very much on the same wave, um, really love Sasha's teachings and, um, and feel that we resonate as mothers mm -hmm. and household yogis. Yes. You know, and that's mm -hmm. really, it's the way it is for a lot of us in this world is we're not out there in the Himalayan caves, we're in the cave of the home and we've got real life issues to contend with on a day-to-day -day basis and how do you keep journeying inwards and keep um, evolving mm. with all of that distraction mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how does this, this tool of yoga, how does it support us on that journey? Mm -hmm. How does it aid yeah. us? How does it support us so that our experience of this thing we call life is richer and yeah. deeper mm. and more fulfilling, more connected. Mm. So then, who would be your major influences as a yoga teacher? Because I'm sure in the last 20, 25 years, you've probably studied with a lot of different people. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah so who, who <laughs> would you think are the main ones that inform your teaching now? Like, who are you turning to? Um, so definitely um, my original teacher, Katie Minatstis, who um, is now the, she's the founder of Jiva Mukta Yoga in Sydney, mm -hmm. um, and she uh, introduced me to, um, I guess, the ways of the Jiva Mukti tradition, which is that more eclectic um, style where um, it comes from Sharon Gannon and David Life with the mm -hmm. performance aspect, and my heritage mm -hmm. was in performance work um, as an actress, so um, that really appealed to me, the um, chanting and the... Um, and the other deeper kind of practices that she brings mm -hmm. to her focuses. So that was where I began with my yoga. Um, but definitely over the years, um, you know, I've always been inspired by, funnily enough, Shiva Ray mm -hmm. um, and her, you know, prana flow style. And then meeting Nayana was just, uh, you know, a mm -hmm. godsend given that Nayana has trained and worked so very closely with Shiva Ray over the years. So I feel I've had a really direct transmission um, through and via Niana of those teachings and then Niana's teachers, you know, mm -hmm. which would include many, many amazing um, artists of yoga. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then Sasha, who have your main influences been? Some crossover or different? Yeah, some crossover, although interesting enough, I come from an Iyengar background and ah. I've spent years studying in the Iyengar tradition and studied with many of the senior Iyengar teachers. 
Uh, and, you know, I feel really blessed to have had that. I think I can get, can get a bit of a bad rap <laughs> in the <laughs> yoga world. Because <laughs> it is very strict and it is very alignment-based. But within that alignment, there's the... You know, there's the real mindfulness aspect. The alignment mm. can be and is, which isn't spoken about a lot, but it is used as a, as a tool in a way of grounding the mind and focusing the mind mm -hmm. and embodying, embodying into that part of your body, you know, of your little toe mm. or the way you're placing mm. your thumb. So it's used as a mindfulness tool. It's used as an embodiment tool, yes, and it's used as an alignment tool for safety mm. as well. So I think... You know, I, I feel really blessed for that. And then through that, I, you know, then as you do, you grow and you kind of branch out and you look for other teachers. So Body Mind Centering uh, came into my life and teachers that have studied in the Body Mind Centering tradition. So Donna Farhi, yeah, uh, she's amazing to study team. under, yeah, mm -hmm. her intelligence around that. And, you know, and, and an even deepening understanding of embodiment. And then most recently, Tara Judell, who mm -hmm. Sandy and I are both going to study with in November in Bali. So. Yeah, very excited about that. Mm -hmm. I kind of forgot you, Ayinga, because I know you through ecstatic dance and through that kind of whole real movement yeah. base. So it feels like you've gone from almost one extreme to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite a transition. Yeah, quite a transition. Although I do come from a dance background. Yeah. Dance is my background. So... You know, I've always, you know, we could call it dance or we could call it embodiment practices. I've practiced mm -hmm. movement practices since I was five years old. Mm -hmm. That's always been such mm -hmm. a big part of my life. It's um, interesting that we're both from a performance background, yeah, isn't it? That yeah. creativity. Yeah. That aspect yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I guess in some ways, you know, you could say I've come around full circle of, mm -hmm. um, you know, gone from a lot of movement to Ienga, which is not, you know, you hold the poses for five minutes each side you might yeah. you know in a whole class you might do four or five poses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe six including a shoulder stands shavasana seven poses mm -hmm. so yeah a lot more movement but within that you know still that mindfulness aspect the embodiment yeah. aspect that um and even though my classes are now much more vinyasa flow based they're still um at a slow steady pace where you can still mm -hmm. take that time to really mm -hmm. ground into the concept mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Sandy, what is juicing you up about teaching right now? So when you're teaching, what's the core tenet of it? Yeah, so at the moment I've been um, really exploring in my own practice and then sharing with my students um, new wisdom that's coming through actually from um, a technique or a style of approach called the bow spring. Um, oh, so the bow spring. Yeah, the bow spring. Okay. So it's, it's working with um, what's called tensegrity or tension integrity in the fascial lines of the body. Uh -huh. So working to sort of find within the postures subtle nuances of shape to internally massage out tensions, stuckness, uh -huh. um, blocks emotionally, mentally. That There's a sort of an internal um, shifting of alignment that for me feels a little bit more, I suppose, in the feminine, which is not to say it's female approach or only for females, but that that, that embodiment of um, of being able to really listen intuitively to what the body needs and then mm -hmm. to subtly shift and change into those shapes. So that's been um, miraculous in helping to heal my lower back, which I've been struggling mm -hmm. with for years. Um, I feel that um, I've had some sharing around the sacrum and, and some things going on to do perhaps with the way in which I was practicing and the way in which I was taught. So a lot of linear line approach in yoga and, the, you know, this flat back or tucking the tailbone, all these kinds of principles mm -hmm. that have been part of what it is that we have learned in the past have really shifted for me with this new approach. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about bringing that. So are you, are you in a posture and then within the pose moving slightly? Yeah, um, to, to an extent, it's actually, it's, it's adjustments to the way in which we come up and down from standing to lowering. Uh -huh. It's also the way in which we're sensing into the intuitive body. So if there's a feeling of needing to shift the hips in this way in downward dog, then why would we stay static in the posture? So there's, right. there's a little bit of, um, it's, it's moving with the inner flow of energy, mm -hmm. um, following and tracing with that, yeah. which is actually ungluing. Uh, stuck fascia, um, mm -hmm. which is then ungluing uh, emotional or mental 
grooves of stuckness too because we get to start to wash through mm. um, those channels that actually are inhabited within the fascial lines. Oh, cell phone. Is that yours? Is no. That? Why? <laughs> We're turning off the cell phone. Um, it's a message from the yeah. universe. <laughs> I love what you're saying because it sounds like there's a real overlap there with what both what Shiva Ray does and what Tara Judell does. That's it. And this is why I'm drawn so much to training with Tara Jadella. I, yeah. I haven't come to know her personally yet, but I'm really excited to meet her in November because what I've been receiving from Sasha's classes has been that um, that real embodiment of the organs, the kidneys, of, of, mm. of, of really tracing and, and being fully present within those cells of the different parts of the body. And yes, it does work really nicely with that. Um, I think this... the the tension integrity wisdom has been coming more from Nayana for me. Um, uh -huh. She did a lot of training with Desi Springer and John Friend. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in our last year teacher training, it, we took quite a turn um, based mm. on those principles. And I've been really, um, yeah, really enjoying the evolution of my own body and then excited to share that. And yeah. I have had feedback from students that, that their low backs are feeling more healed, that they're building strength and support in their spine. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's a big part of it that, you know, we're using more of the muscles that we let life lasted for so long, our glutes, our hamstrings, you know, in, in yoga, we get really long hamstrings mm. from doing all these forward we folds, but do. actually what about, well, we hope we do, <laughs> but in, in turn, we get these kind of like flaccid flat butts that don't quite hold I mean, yeah. they're the biggest muscle in the body, the gluteus maximus, and to have that power behind you gives you the inner support, yeah. and that's yeah. what I'm finding really yeah. exciting. What I see yeah. with the, you know, watching you embody that, what I've noticed is, you know, there's been years, I think, of really flattening up the spine, mm -hmm. and I've seen it coming through the Oinga traditions mm. of kind of, you know, tucking the pelvis under and drawing the thoracic spine in, and, you know, and it's that's not the way our spine is designed we're curved it's creatures designed. we've got we've curvature. got a serpent spine yeah. we've got we've yeah, got yeah. hips that move around like this and whether you're male or female yeah. we've got these intuitive bodies that are far vaster and more malleable than we give them credit for sometimes or, yeah. or have done in the yeah. past yeah yeah um yeah it's totally distracted by the dog right now. Oh, he's oh, you know. so beautiful yeah is it she she, she. oh sorry she, she. I only met her today so. Sasha, what's lighting you up about your teaching then at the moment? So what's lighting me up at the moment with my teaching is that you know, deepening, deepening and deepening into embodiment. And the more mm -hmm. I deepen that, the more that I understand that there really is no out there. You know, we can read mm -hmm. scripture and we can, you know, we can study different ideas and concept and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But the more that I embody and understand the, the incredible wisdom that's in here, right? Mm. You know, the same wisdom that created the mountains mm. created this body. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we can get quiet enough and drop in enough, the understanding that I'm gaining, the awakening that I'm gaining, you know, of this body is awake, alive, aware, conscious intelligence. It's just mm. that we're often asleep to that. You know, like our mm. pineal gland, when yeah. you really start to embody that and actually, so when I talk about embodiment, what I mean by that is actually get a felt sense. And that can seem yeah. like, well, how do I actually feel? Because we can read about our, our pineal gland, like this is what it does and we have the book and we have the picture, mm. like that's map, but it's not the journey Mm -hmm. You know, so embodiment is like, well, what does that actually feel like to dive in and go into that? And, you know, from a teaching's perspective, what still amazes me that when I present these, people actually also get a felt sense. If you use the right, not right, but cues that can really help people deepen into it, mm -hmm. that felt sense that our pineal gland is actually, you know, it's, it's my pineal gland, our pineal glands are completely aware of what season it is at the mm. moment, what time mm. of the day it is at the moment. You know, it's connected, knows with what the moon's doing. Mm. Most people would say, well, I can't feel a gland. What are you talking about? Yeah. How can I feel a gland? Yeah. It would seem impossible. I mean, a lot of people can't feel their feet on the earth. Yes. Let yeah. alone their internal organs. Yes. Or a gland. Yeah. Yeah, so but you're I, teaching this, yeah. right? But I am teaching this, and you know, yeah. and, and it's you know, so you, I guess, when you say like what's lighting you up, I think with teaching, what lights you up is always that edge, you know, with mm. your teaching. 
you know, so it's like this is my edge. And yeah, sometimes I'm like, whoa, how are they going to get this? <laughs> Totally right. relate to that. I'm stepping out <laughs> off the precipice. Is that going down? You know, so just <laughs> as you know, like teachers that come through the training will yeah. feel like that just teaching a sun salutation, like that's mm. going to be their edge. Yeah, you know, it's the same for us as teachers. Even though we've been teaching for years, otherwise, you know, there's no passion in when we're teaching, mm. and then it becomes dry, and then that's mm. not inspiring for anybody. If we're not, I feel if I'm not inspired as a teacher, then how can my students possibly yeah. be inspired? Mm. You know, and the feedback that I've had, you know, I've had or t- taught a class around kidneys, you know, and I've had students, and students actually, I've had a couple that, like, Queenstown's very transient, so, you know, you get your regulars, but you have your people that are passing mm. through, and I had a woman come up to me at the end of class, and she said, when you said we were going to do kidneys, I thought, what is this woman talking about? I've never done a <laughs> class that's so deeply internal. Mm-hmm. And my classes are deeply internal, but they're physically challenging yeah. as well at the same time. And she was just like, by the end of it, for the first time, I could actually feel my kidneys. Wow. And so, you know, it's this idea that we're, we're awakening to more and more of ourselves. It's like we're downloading more and more of ourselves yeah. into this present moment. You know, we've got uh-huh. 37 trillion odd cells in our body. But we're so, we're only aware of such a small fraction of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's another way of expanding consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people talk all the time about waking up or becoming more conscious, but it's often quite eerie fear, right? Yeah. It's this whole, it's like, hang on a sec. And that's what I'm saying. It's not out there. In the body. Are you aware? Can you feel your glands? Can you feel feel that? And and then they hit, and every part of our body, of course, has a different intelligence Mm. and wisdom. And what I've noticed, the importance of it really is when we connect with that is it becomes a resource for us. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's yeah. like when we really understand that, you know, we can feel our kidneys and understand what they feel like, you know, our legs grew from our kidneys. Like you grow your kidneys and then you grow your legs right. off of that. So they're very, like if I, I teach it when, and I'll, I talk about that a lot when I teach kidneys, very, it's a very grounded class and often people feel very grounded afterwards. So mm-hmm. once they have that experience, when they feel themselves ungrounded, they're like, oh, I just need to embody my kidneys. Yeah. And that might just be breathing. <laughs> it might just yeah, be yeah. breathing into your into kidneys. Yeah. Or just bringing them online because then once you've got, you know, when you bring them back online, you, they will do the work for you because that's what they, they naturally hold that intelligence of a grounded energy. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, when the kidneys are depleted energetically, mm. um, you know, that's often mm. the case when we're in a stressed state yes. or um, in a frenzied, hurried state of mind. Yeah. And so again, as a resource, being able to go into that kind of sense of, I can recharge my kidneys like I recharge my mobile phone or my laptop that my body needs a recharge, then, you know, you ignite that essence energy that that actually affects the whole body. Yeah. 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 And I think it's it's And and we become our own. We become our own resource, like you say, you know, that we charge Mm. ourselves so we're not dependent on looking outside of ourselves, you know. Mm. And that's, that's not bad or wrong, but it's like actually everything we have have and need to stay balanced, grounded, centered, awaken, grow, mm. transform mm. is actually is within, us. Is within mm. us. I love how you guys are finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I just Try have to, to point that out that it's like you can see the synergy between you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you're obviously completely on the same page I can feel see like we are. yeah you can yeah. see how powerful the training's going to be yeah because it's a month-long immersive training right so people mm-hmm. sign up and they come and spend a whole month with you two women yeah. mm-hmm. basically imbibing of your wisdom yeah yeah one our joint, you know our joint yeah. wisdom I think we've both been practicing I've been practicing 20 years you've been I've practicing, been practicing about 20 for years. about 20 years and teaching yeah. for about 10 10. Yeah, and I've yeah. been teaching for 15. So yeah. between us, there's a lot of wisdom in yeah. the practice. Yeah. Experience. And then, you know, and as mm. we both said, we're both mothers, you know, relationships. So there's there's a lot of life wisdom yeah. in there. Yeah. You so. know, we, we, just because we're yoga teachers doesn't mean we're, like, walking this path of ease all the time. There's always challenges and obstacles. So I feel like we can mm. really relate to that. And it's, it's, it's having yoga as this accessible, um, amazing artwork of tools that we can access to mm. live our lives in a more supported and happy and contented way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and one of the things I love about your training is that you have um, you have an application process, I was going to say strict, it's not that it's strict, it's just that it's very clear mm-hmm. in terms of 
how the application process works. So rather That's than right. just yeah. accept anyone who shows up with the money and says, hey, I want to do your training, you're like, well, we need you to apply. Can That's you right. explain why, why, why do that? Why not just accept people with money? Yeah, um, I feel that part of the process of creating a framework around what it is that we're seeking or hoping for is that we create a group dynamic that really supports mm. one another, that we're bringing in students who, um, who have a thirst and a hunger for the teachings and the learnings. Um, we're also hoping that we can attract students who may already be trained. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they've done a 200 hour somewhere else um, and they're wanting to advance and, and deepen their practice and their um, teaching style or learn new wisdoms. And I, I feel that that framework creates more of a sort of an opportunity for us to hear people's voice at this stage, you know, even before we meet them, that we can really hear mm -hmm. what are your desires, what are your deepest yearnings, what you know, what, what is it or how is it that we might actually be able to serve these students so that we mm -hmm. can really understand um, where they're at in their process and their yoga. Mm -hmm. um, so that when we get together as a group in this dynamic that we've got a really powerful force for um, helping and assisting each other and, and just being in that, um, I guess, that barb of connection and and unity. Mm -hmm. That we're not having someone who's really struggling over there because you know, they've only done two months of yoga and they can't even keep up with this and that and the other. It's not that we're going to be taking out any whips. We we have a compassionate, no loving approach. The staying yeah. at home. And that's, it's, I mean, I've had, yeah. we've had students, Nayana and I, in the first couple of years, had students on the program that were, you know, upwards of 50 years old or even 60 plus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, practices at the beginning where, you know, even down dog was a shaky struggle. But, but by the end of the training, it's incredible how much they embody. Mm. And it, it's we're not discriminating against age or anything like that. It's just about actually hearing people's authentic voice, where they're at now, and how we can better serve them. Mm -hmm. So I think some experience of yoga is important. Um, I think some real yearning for the practice is, is something we want to hear, hear yeah. from people. Yeah. Mm. And Sasha, what are you most excited about sharing on the training? I mean, there's, you know, there's so much. I think one of the biggest things that I really value myself in trainings is that group wisdom mind. So, yes, mm. we're going to be teaching a lot and we're going to be imparting a lot of knowledge and wisdom collectively. But I think, you know, in these processes, it's really important to remember that there's so much wisdom within the group. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my passions um and if you've been to my set dance classes that's why i always have a you know sharing at the end because there's so much learning you know it's like those you know the different way we individually show up that consciousness shows up within us all has a slightly different flavor and texture and when you share mm -hmm. that it's like a greater learning and i think that really adds to the richness mm -hmm. and the learning and the depth you mm -hmm. know in our own self and then collectively to the whole as well. And, you know, which is that whole idea of having applications so that we can see where people are at, where we can take them, how we can work with the group collectively. Mm. Because we're individual, but we're, we're a collective group and we're impacting on each other all the time energetically. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, like we don't necessarily yeah. understand that fully, but, you know, it's like the heart torus, the, you know, the scientific evidence behind that now is so big, you know, the electromagnetic field around our heart, which radiates out. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment, our heart fields are all communicating and talking to one another, mm -hmm. creating this oneness as a group. So here mm -hmm. I am individually, but we're collectively creating this experience as a group. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's something that I'm really, you know, passionate about sharing and um, diving into with the group. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's such an organic process once you actually have all these different souls together <laughs> and, and what actually comes about that you mm. could never plan or manipulate or anything mm. like that. It's such an organic unfolding. Mm -hmm. And you can never experience that on your right own. Mm. The power of the group is amazing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's all about relationship, isn't it? It's, it's relationship to self, but then it's relationship to others. It's, yeah. it's the yoga. It's yeah. the real yoking. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we, you know, there's that saying, isn't there? And it's so true. You know, you might be able to meditate and fall lotus on your cushion for 10 hours a day, but you get up off the cushion and you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point in your practice? <laughs> Yeah, and when you are being an asshole, what tools do you have? Yeah, to call? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or recognizing, I think I'm being an asshole, <laughs> or, or the ability to admit I'm being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what might I do about that? Breathe. Yeah. Take a little moment. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love to keep talking, but I'm aware of time. Um, so just before we wrap up, when, when people leave this training, what are you hoping that they leave with? Or how would they have changed over the course of the four weeks and rest with the two of you? Mm. I feel, as Sasha said, that our training is a transformational process. So um, I feel that our training is just the beginning and that what we're providing is um, a toolbox of practices which are, you know, eons, years old, really, passed down through generations and generations of amazing yogis. Mm -hmm. um, and that we're saying, here are the tools, here's your toolkit, now go out into the world and whether you choose to teach or whether you choose to just evolve in your life, um, you have this to come back to, you have your sadhana, your practice, um, and we encourage that and we encourage a, a real integration process so that what we do in this mm. intense four weeks isn't, it isn't by any stretch the end at the end of the training, it is simply the beginning and anything to add to that session? Yeah. I think I just want to reiterate, like you said, it's the start of the practice. And one of the things that I've seen is the difference with the Nadi teacher training, perhaps compared to others. You know, where people go overseas, mm -hmm. the thing about the Nadi teacher training is that you're supported afterwards through the studio, mm -hmm. you know, so that you've got, you know, you've got us here supporting you, at least if you're not based in Queenstown within New Zealand. I mean, we have that anyway, even where, wherever you are in the world, the yes. start of the practice, you know. Yeah. Um, I think also what I've noticed for teachers is that they come out and because they start te practicing, teaching from right from the get go within the training. What I've We're seen with my like teachers. Day. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you make them start teaching on day two? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. So, yes, there's this, as we've talked a lot about, this process of transformation and embodiment and change and tools and resources and consciousness, all the juicy stuff. Yeah. You know, but they come out as very clear, grounded teachers as well that have mm. it have an ability to create a well crafted journey for people a well crafted experience. And they can teach a class and they yeah. know how to put it together yeah. and we help with that mm. process. And there's yeah. there's then that integration over time that happens which is so important. And we have some follow on work that we do get the students to do, um, some book reviews, some embodiment practices, some you know, some real study actually. Yeah. Um, that's Svadhyaya is a very important part of the onward journey. Um, and I've heard feedback from our past students and, and was talking even to a graduate this morning who handed in her last projects and she just said that was just such the most important part of the whole training mm -hmm. was yeah. actually being away from the training and then integrating all of this juicy stuff and actually going, Oh, I get that and doing that light bulb goes off and then oh that epiphany now I understand and, and what Sandy said then and what Naina said then and what Sasha said then now resonates deeply within my mm -hmm. sense and it's, it becomes mm -hmm. embodied and that takes time mm -hmm. it can take time and sometimes it doesn't take time in certain instances but it's a it's a journey mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you thank you